Hello friends, this video on transport in plants part 13 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now the question is, we got to know that okay, water entered inside the root hairs. But when you look at the cross section of a root, for example, if you think of this root, so these are your root hairs. So water entered here. That is fine by the process of diffusion. But now water has to enter even into the deeper layers of the root because when we studied about the cross section of a root in the anatomy uh, lesson, there we saw that it is not only the root hair, root hair is the outermost layer. So these are the root hairs. So right now water is here. So from here it has to enter inside to the deeper layers of root. So this is your root hair. Then you have this parent with the ground tissue. Then you have the endodermis here. And then you have your xylem and phloem. So these red and white structures which you see, they represent xylem and phloem. So water has to travel through all these. So now how water will enter into these deeper root layers? That is a challenge now. Now there are two different pathways by which water can reach up to endodermis. So endodermis is somewhere here. So one is apoplast pathway and the second one is symplast pathway. So both of them are two different pathways or two different ways by which a water can enter from root hair to up to the endodermis. Now let us discuss both of these pathways one by one. So first we will talk about the apoplast pathway. So what kind of pathway is this? Let us have a quick look. Now before we discuss apoplast pathway, let us look at the word origin. What is the meaning of apoplast? The word apo means away from. So away from what? Plast would mean the main part of the cell or the cytoplasm. So apoplast is basically away from the cytoplasm. So what does that mean? Here the water movement occurs through intercellular spaces and the cell wall and it does not cross the cytoplasm of the cells. For example, right now water has entered into root hairs. So how will it enter? Like suppose these are the cells. So it will just pass through the cell walls, something like this. So it will not get into the cytoplasm. Now each of this is a cell. The black colored outer line represents the cell wall and inside you have the cytoplasm. So it will just move from through the cell walls and it will never enter into the cytoplasm. So that is why it is called apoplast that is away from cytoplasm. So now it enters in this fashion throughout the ground tissue. It will enter like this. But as soon as it reaches the endodermis, there it has a waxy layer called the Casparian strip. You remember we have already discussed about this. So this Casparian strip which is present here, they are impermeable to water. That is they do not allow water to pass through them. So in that case, it cannot pass through the Casparian strip. Therefore, as soon as it reaches the endodermis, it directly enters into the cytoplasm of the cells forming the endodermis because it is not allowed to pass through the cell wall anymore due to the presence of the Casparian strip. So it would look somewhat like this. Let us suppose this is the, these are the cells. So here if you see, this is the cell wall. This structure which you see, the orange colored structure in between, that is the middle lamella that is the uh, that layer which separates one cell from the next one right and here you have the primary cell wall the secondary cell wall and then outside you have this one middle lamella the orange colored structure so that is how it is so now if you look at the structure of the cell wall in even more detail you will see this is the middle lamella and this is the primary cell wall and in the primary cell wall you have so many tube like structures so these tube like structure basically helps in carrying water so water is transported through these tube like structures here in this case and that is why they pass through the cell walls and they never enter into the cytoplasm so let us suppose this is this is what it means so the water Suppose these are the cells and let us suppose from here the endodermis starts. 
right so this is how water will move just through the walls but as soon as it enters endodermis it is no more allowed to move through the cell walls because of the presence of Casparian strip. So it will directly move into the cytoplasm and then it will pass the cytoplasm directly and then get into the xylem. So that is the apoplast pathway where the cell moves through the cell walls and stays away from the cytoplasm or the main portion of the cell. So here no crossing of cell membrane is involved because this is the cell membrane. So you don't really need to cross the membrane because you are not getting inside the cytoplasm. So no crossing of cell membrane is involved. How this mass flow occurs? This occurs due to adhesive and cohesive properties of water. That is because cohesive means all water molecules are bound together by hydrogen bonds. So that attraction between water molecules is called cohesion. And attraction between water molecules and the surface over which water flows is called adhesion. So because of this cohesive and adhesive forces, water is able to move in this fashion up to the endoderms. So this is how apoplast pathway occurs. So here the water never enters into the cytoplasm or it never crosses the cell membrane trying to enter into cytoplasm. It always moves through the cell walls. So these are the cell walls and through this it always tries to move like this. But when it reaches the uh, Casparian strip zone, that is when it reaches the endodermis, there it directly jumps into the endodermis. And it, I mean, it jumps into the cytoplasm because it is not allowed to pass through the Casparian strip. So that is the concept of apoplast pathway. So this is how the movement will take place. Let us suppose water will enter through the root hairs and then it will move through the cell walls. So here you see it is always moving, not like this, like this. So it is always moving through the cell walls. But as soon as it enters the epider uh, endodermis layer, so this is your Casparian strip. So it will directly flow into the cytoplasm. So here it will no more move through the cell walls. Now let us look at the next pathway that is the symplast pathway. So here the opposite thing will happen. Here the cells will move through the cytoplasm of the different cells. So from one cytoplasm it will get into the other cytoplasm. So let us suppose these are the three cells. The cytoplasms of the neighboring cells will be connected through channels like this which are known as plasmodesmata. So plasmodesmata are basically openings between two uh, cells which connects the cytoplasm of the two cells so that the two cells can communicate or exchange materials of their cytoplasm. So here uh, when the water reaches this cell it directly moves to the plasmodesmata and passes through the cytoplasm again moves into the cytoplasm of the new cell. So that is how the symplast pathway occurs. Sym means towards. So it is towards the cytoplasm. So when you talk about this uh, uh, root structure, so it, this is how the water will enter. And now you see it is in passing through the cytoplasm of the cell. So now it is no more passing through the cell walls. It is directly crossing the cell membrane and then entering into the cytoplasm. And that is why how it is moving forward. So here crossing of cell membrane occurs and therefore it is slower because whenever some uh, water wants to pass through the cell membrane then it has to follow one of the processes like facilitated diffusion or active transport. So that will consume energy that will need proteins. So all these things will consume extra time and that is why symplast pathway is a slower process when compared to the apoplast pathway. So here mass flow occurs along a potential gradient. As I said, from high concentration to low concentration, it moves in that fashion. So not too much of a role of cohesive and adhesive forces here. So if we quickly compare the apoplast as well as the symplast pathway, this is how it will look like. Let us suppose here you have 
the root hairs so the root hairs will absorb water from the soil now from the root hairs it will enter into the epidermis of the root that is the outermost layer from epidermis it will get into the cortex and then into the endodermis from endodermis it will get into pericycle and from there it will enter into xylem now how this can enter from root hairs to the endodermis one possibility is apoplastic pathway where the cell will flow through the cell walls that is the extracellular space so this red colored structure represents the apoplast pathway so you see it is not at all entering the cytoplasm of any cell this is this represents the cytoplasm so it is not entering it is just moving through the cell walls that is apoplast when you talk about symplast pathway it will move through the cytoplasm now two neighboring cells will have openings like this to communicate with each other and these openings are known as plasmodesmata so what will happen water will move from one cell to other cell through these plasmodesmata and this type of pathway is known as the symplast pathway. So here you can note the difference in the endodermis. As I said, Casparian strip will be present and Casparian strip is completely impermeable to water. That is, it is a waxy layer which doesn't allow water to pass through it. So as a result of this, even when uh, the apoplastic pathway was followed, where it was moving through the cell walls, if you see, as soon as it reaches near the Casparian strip, instead of going through this red color structure, it directly jumps into the cytoplasm because now the Casparian strip will not allow it to move further. So beyond this point, beyond the endodermis, both of them will follow the symplast pathway that is whether it was apoplastic pathway or it was symplastic pathway after endodermis both of them will flow through the cytoplasm right so please understand the difference very clearly when we talk about apoplast apples away from so it will be away from cytoplasm it will move through the cell walls through the boundaries but it will move like this only till the casparian strip as soon as it reaches endodermis it will directly jump into the cytoplasm and beyond that it will start behaving like the symplast pathway and in symplast pathway it will directly flow through the cytoplasm it will pass it will cross the plasma membranes via the plasmodesmata so when com when compared uh, symplastic pathway is a slower process than apoplast because it has to cross the plasma membrane. So now this portion is clear. So now what, what all did we cover? We understood how water is absorbed from soil by root hairs, how water reaches from root hairs till endodermis. Now the question is how water is passed from this pericycle to xylem? How is this part taken care of? So, so that is the thing which we will talk about now that is transport of water from endodermis beyond endodermis to xylem so how water enters into xylem by what mechanism thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again